I'm conducting an, an experiment today in the preservation of grape juice in ancient times and uh, in the context of wine in the Bible. Of course, the question being, was all the wine in the Bible fermented, as, as some think, many think, and uh, particularly the wine at the Last Supper, supper. was that fermented or was that grape juice? Uh, the most common argument, of course, against it being unfermented grape juice is that the grape harvest had been about eight months earlier. And so many believe that it was impossible for the ancients to preserve grape juice for eight months, so that, that could be what they would be drinking at the time of Passover and the Last Supper. So we're going to do some experiments with ancient grape juice preservation. The first thing uh, we're going to do is juice the grapes. I'm going to be using this Acme Juicer. Acme Juicerator, this is great, it has a lifetime guarantee. Uh, it uses a paper filter here, we're going to put that in. Now in the case of ancient uh, must making, juicing of the grapes, of course they use a wine press. And so in a press, uh, the grapes are just smashed and smashed. And, and, uh, and in the case of the centrifugal juicer, it's a much more violent process where the grapes are ground up and, and then the, the juice is crushed out of that. And so we're actually going to end up with a lot more of the skin or the peel of the grape in the juice than they would have in ancient times. In fact, early on in the press, that juice that came out in the early process of pressing it would be almost completely free of skin. And it's the grape skin which contains the yeast which causes the juice to ferment along with ferment uh, wheat yeast that's in the air. Okay, I've got these beautiful grapes from Easy Way Market. These are huge globe grapes. Now they have the seed in them. So we'll be getting a little bit of the seed in the juice. They probably wouldn't have had that in ancient times. But that's okay uh, if you're juicing today because, uh, you know, my doctor actually prescribed grape seed extract for my joints before. And so there's actually some nutritional quality in the grape seeds themselves. So it's okay to get a little in there. Now the story in the Bible is that uh, when the spies came back across the Jordan from Canaan with news of the promised land being a land of milk and honey, they brought back with them a cluster of grapes that was so large that it had to be hung from a pole, carried hung from a pole between two men. It took two men to carry one cluster of grapes from the promised land. So those were some mega grapes. But these are also some great grapes and we're going to get a lot of juice out of there. It's going to be quite a process to juice all the grapes I have for the experiment. So let's get started. started getting kind of thick. So that means it's time to change out the filter. You gotta wait a while for the spinner to slow down. It takes quite a while to spin it at such high RPM so you can stop it with your finger. And this is gonna be a little messy. But the filter does make it easier for the to get the stuff out, the pulp. And here's a tip for if you're using the acne juicerator, if for some reason you do need to change out the filter during the process and you're not finished, uh, maybe it got off balance or something, be sure and just dry out the cylinder before you uh, go to put another filter in there because if it's wet, it's really difficult to get the paper filter to fit in there right. Going back together. Uh-oh. Lost a part. Now that that inner cylinder that cylinder is dry uh, we can it's real easy to get a filter in there correctly once again I'm gonna 
to clean out my strainer and then we're ready to go again. Okay, I'm taking a short break here. Only got one more batch to go. The juicing's been going pretty smoothly. It can get rough with grapes. Grapes are not the easiest uh, thing to juice really in this kind of juicer. But it's going well and I'm going to stop and taste some of this fresh juice, wine if you will, straight out of the juicer. Mmm, I'm telling you, when I taste that, I immediately think like the Tirosh in the Bible, Tirosh, the, the blessing. It's a blessing. It's awesome. If you've never tried fresh, squeezed grape juice, well, you're missing out. It really is a blessing. Oh, God, that is so good. And nutritious, too. All right, here's our yield. And uh, that's quite a lot of juice. Uh, but $40, $40 worth, roughly, of grapes. And so it's not cheap, even fresh juice, today. It is a little bit cloudy, so we're going to let it settle for a while and then try uh, really three different methods of preservation, if you will, and then also uh, leave some of the juice out as a control to see how it ferments. I'm curious to see exactly what it does. The experiment continues. <laughs> the experiment continues. Here I've got about three cups of wine. I'm going to cook that down to about half its volume. And uh, that would be called in Roman days, defrutum. And then this one I have a little tiny pot back here. I'm going to keep adding to and try and cook it down to one third its original volume. That was called sapa. Sapa. And, uh, and then here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cook off a tiny bit of this. Really, a one-tenth is what you're supposed to lose after you've skimmed it and everything. And so, really, it's just bringing it, almost bringing it to a boil. And, and then we're going to bottle that up, Roman fashion or uh, ancient fashion also, and, and see what it does. Now, I have a... Now I have a recipe, if you will, here. Now I scrolled it up for fun. It's by uh, Columella. And I have here that this one was written around 50 A.D. Now Columella was about Jesus' age. He was born 4 A.D., so uh, about the same time as Jesus. And uh, he wrote a series of 12 books on Roman agriculture. Believe it or not, you can still get them today on Amazon.com. That's right, you can still get them. I wonder what Columella would have thought of that if he knew he could buy his uh, books on the internet here 2,000 years later. But anyway, here's, uh, let me read you this recipe here. We shall heat the furnace at first with gentle fire and with only very small pieces of wood which the country people call crimea brushwood, so that the must may boil in a leisurely manner. The man in charge of this boiling should have ready prepared strainers made of rushes or broom, but the latter should be in a raw state, that is to say, not beaten with a hammer. He should stir up any dregs which have settled at the bottom and bring them up to the top. He should clear away with the strainer any scum which remains on the surface and he should go on doing this until the must seems cleared of all lees. If there is plenty of wood, it is better to boil the must and clear off all of the scum with the dregs. If this is done, a tenth part will be lost, but the rest keeps good forever. Afterwards, when it is cooled, you should pour it into vessels, cover it, and seal it up, in this way, it will keep longer, and no harm will befall it. Now, it's, it's difficult to think of grape juice and wine and agriculture outside of our lens of modern times. Uh, uh, imagine you were uh, a, at a vineyard in ancient times and the harvest came in. You would have a huge amount of grapes, but what do you do with it? You don't have refrigeration. There's no highway with uh, semi-trucks hauling it away. So, one of the first things you want to do is concentrate some of it. And this is 
uh, an idea that everyone does still today. How much orange juice or what have you in all the bottles of juice you buy does it say juice from concentrate? Almost all of it. So when the Florida orange producers say uh, harvest their oranges, well most of it is immediately cooked down into concentrate. And so this is what uh, some of the ancient wine growers would do, of the day would do. In fact, archaeological expeditions have unearthed ancient wine press remains that appear to have a kettle attached to the press so that the juice would fall directly into the kettle so it could be immediately cooked down. All right, we're cooking away there. And sure enough, there's scum rising to the top, and I'll be dipping that out with the strainer. We still got some more of the juice left here. This is going in the refrigerator for drinking fresh. And then, I'm, I hate to do it almost, but I'm leaving this batch out. That's about a cup and a half, a cup and a half of the juice. And we're gonna let it stay out in the open and just see what happens exactly. This is actually cooked a little bit because it took so long to come to a boil. It, it cooked off a little bit more. I think we lost, lost a little bit more than a tenth of it. I got the hot juice into this bottle and then also the boiled juice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this in a more ancient manner. This is a glass uh, neck there with a little ceramic top and is, as described uh, some vessels were found, amphora were found with wine in them that had been uh, sealed with olive oil. So we're going to try that. We're going to pour a little olive oil right on here around the edge. And so as not to have all our eggs in one basket, I have some of it in this other bottle that has a, a modern rubber seal on it. So we know this one's going to have a nice airtight seal. Now what has happened really, unbeknownst to the ancients, as is that we have actually pasteurized this juice, this wine. And so uh, we've killed off the yeast in there by bringing it over 180 degrees. And hopefully by pouring the hot wine into this container, it's also sterilize the container and there's you know quite a bit of air in there hopefully that's sterilized also same with this one and so we're going to set this aside now and you know wait a few days or whatever uh, i'm not sure how long we'll wait we'll wait at least a few days and take a and uh then see what happens so i'm going to put these up here okay we're still gently simmering here over a brushwood fire This one's going to take all night to get all that juice cooked down. Here's the rest of it still here. This one's only got a little bit more to go. The defrutum. All right, looks like the defrutum is ready. That's supposed to be about a concentrated about a half. I think we maybe went a little beyond that. Just going to store it in here. Again, it's pasteurized, but I think even beyond that, the yeast cannot survive after a certain amount of the moisture content has been removed. So, and we'll put that one aside also. So that one later on will be used to be mixed with water and uh, back to its original or a more diluted form. Theoretically, the water will even reactivate the flavor.
in a big field of tall grass. I lay there in the sun and felt it possessing my face. As I fell asleep and dreamed. I dreamed I was in a Hollywood movie. That I was a star of the movie. This really blew my mind. The fact that me, an overfed, long haired, leaping gnome, should be the star of a Hollywood movie. Hmm. But there I was. Hmm. I was taken to a place. The Hall of the Mountain. Okay, it's quite cooked down now into what uh, Cato and other Romans called Sapa. And four in the bottle. Concentrated grape juice. Very highly concentrated. So let's uh, let it cool down a little bit and then try some. The only one we're going to be able to sample today is the Sapa. Now look at that. I don't know if you can see that color very clearly in there, but that is a beautiful amber color. Now also in the Bible, the word debosh is used. Uh, to mean honey, but it's believed by many scholars that they also meant this substance, which would be considered to be grape honey. It's called dibs in Arabic. Anyway, I'm going to try some. First, I'll just going to taste a little bit of it. Now, this could be used as a condiment. You could dip bread in it or something like that. Interesting. A little bit like jelly. Grape honey really describes it quite well. So another thing we're going to try here. Now, we can go ahead and use this tonight because I have no doubt that this will last indefinitely. I mean, it's cooked down. It's almost a syrup sealed up or whatever. It's going to last a long time. Let me grab my glass. Okay. And so I'm just going to put in, we'll just make a little beverage with it. A couple tablespoons, I mean, probably needs to be about four to one. So I'm just going to make a little taste and see what it tastes like mixed with water. Recent scientific study determined that when water was mixed with the wine, it actually had a uh, chemical reaction which enhanced the flavor. Okay. Now, the wine in the Bible is generally mixed. Uh, according to ancients, uh, two to one mixture, three to one water, and as much as ten to one, and we'll come back to that later on. Well, that looks lovely. Oh, yeah. Delicious, fresh, great flavor. What a treat this would be after mostly drinking water all the time to have a treat like this. The fruit of the vine. Fruit of the vine. Okay, that's it for, for part one. Uh, here over the next week, ten days or so, uh, I'll be checking back with, and we'll see how everything's holding up. And so part two will be in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe to my uh, channel if you want to get an email update when it comes out. Salute.